Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Today we are going over some parts from Victor Industries. Now, if you are not familiar with Victor Industries, and that is VKTR Industries, um, they are, I, I guess, a little bit more well known for their piston-driven AR stuff. Today we're going to be going over the G2 Buffer Retainer, their Ambi mag catch and mag release and the star of the show will be their new di complete bolt carrier group so let's get into it so if you like this sort of content please hit that like share subscribe button leave a comment down below it all helps the channel immensely uh, also to be fully transparent victor did send me all of these parts i met them at gun con this year 2024 in grinnell iowa if you don't know what gun con is it is uh a in my opinion, probably the best event of the year. And uh, I highly suggest checking that out on all your social medias uh, for posts on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and stuff like that. So we are saving the bolt carrier group for last. First, we are going to talk about the Ambi Mag Catch Mag Release. Um, now, not being a lefty, this hasn't has as much use case scenario for me, um, but I know plenty of wrong-handed shooters and this thing is a great product. Not much to say about it other than it works really well. It fit, tolerances wise, it has fit this lower um, just fine. It comes with the button spring and all that stuff. Uh, and it has very nice machining and very nice coating. So uh, Victor has put these like serrated Vs in one side and in the other, a little bit of grip texture there for you. And it works very well. So, right, it works exactly as advertised. So, of course, I should be doing it like this as a lefty, but everything drops free, everything works well. Again, it's a mag release, not much to say about it. Um, if it's something, if you're a wrong-handed shooter and you're looking for an ambi mag release, I can recommend this. Now, the second thing is their heavy-duty G2 buffer retainer. Down in there, that is the pin that holds your buffer back in the buffer tube. Um, what is so special about this? So on a long enough timeline of shooting and enough rounds down range, you will have broken a one of the standard like skinny post buffer retainers. Um, they're kind of crappy, they're kind of chintzy. Uh, I've snapped a few of them off because every time your bolt cycles, this your buffer spring slams this uh, slams the carrier and slams that buffer back into this little tiny post on a standard uh, buffer retainer and Victor Industries has done a few things to help mitigate that. Now since you can't really see this me holding it uh, we'll do some close-up stuff here. So to start with the absolute width thickness girth this is getting weird. What they've done is they've made that post from a little tiny, chintzy, not very well thought out post into a giant block on the top of the body of the retainer. On top of which, on top of which, they have a very flat side to the back side that meets the uh, that meets the buffer itself <clears throat> and the retainer is slightly angled. So these two things, number one, helps to keep the retainer from rotating when it is not under extreme tension. Uh, this having a sawing effect as you kind of beat up that retainer all the way around it. Um, it creates a wider surface for the buffer to hit, which means less, less uh, damage to the buffer. Also, because of the angle of the retainer, because the angle of the block on the retainer, it allows the buffer to actually sit a little flatter in the buffer tube, which means the mating surface between your carrier and your buffer is more uh, consistent all the way around it. Now, additionally, the width of this pin is also approximately the width of the groove that is in the bottom of your carrier which means as this is sliding back and it's losing contact it's losing its its uh, position in the upper there is less of a possibility of it having any sort of rotational 
movement, meaning less wear and tear on your upper, less wear and tear on your bolt carrier group. So this thing is actually a super well thought out little thing for being such a tiny piece of the gun. Um, there's a lot that goes into it and I think that it's super well thought out. And don't worry, there will be some shooting soon, I promise you. Um, now we get into the direct impingement complete bolt carrier group from Victor. Now, there is a lot of things done to this thing that I don't think any other company has ever done or does today. Now this guy is a heat treated 8620 steel. It has grade eight fasteners with very good staking in it. It has what they call a long advanced cam path, which I'll get into in a second. And it has some cuts in it that help with friction and stuff like that. Um, chrome plated, so this is a dull, a matte finish chrome plating. We, we see a lot of like DLC coatings and nickel boron coatings and TIN coatings and things like that these days, but you don't see the chrome plating as much. Uh, not only do I think aesthetically it's a cool look, uh, but chrome plating is, is super hard. So it has a thin chrome plate on it, which is what's one of the things giving it this silver look. Uh, and then back here in the back, it is tapered off nicely for that uh, motion back into the buffer tube. So I mentioned long advanced cam path. Now I'm going to go to my cheat sheet here because um, there's a whole lot of words that I'm not going to remember trying to explain to you what that means. Uh, what I do know is that your standard mil spec and basically any other bolt carrier group out there unlocks at 20, I think 20 and a half. Oh, it says here 20.7 degrees. And what they've done is they have changed the cam path by almost two degrees. And um, so now it now unlocks at 22 and a half degrees. Additionally, the cam pin is lapped in a certain way. The, there is an arrow on the top of the cam pin uh, just for the most precision fit possible. So you're putting it back in the right way every time. Now, what they say here, and again, I'm, I have to read this, it says, by correcting the legacy cam path, meaning that 20.7 degrees that I talked about earlier, uh, the bolt unlocks at 22 and a half degrees rather than the 20.7 degrees, ensuring the cam pin is at top dead center where it should be, thus avoiding interference with the receiver wall aft of the cam recess. By delaying unlocking by almost two degrees, Residual chamber pressure is reduced, allowing the cartridge to fully release from the chamber wall, easing extraction. The long advanced cam path results in a flatter shooting platform with less recoil, even in overgassed weapons, and smoother locking and unlocking and reducing muzzle rise. Now that is a very complicated way of saying that they, review, that they have increased the performance of your standard bolt carrier group. So what we're going to do today I'm going to go ahead and put this in three different guns. One of them being the Cox Arms USA Guardian, another being the Anderson Manufacturing Frontline 11.5, and another being the Radical Defense 14.5. Now, to this point, what this has lived in is this 14.5 uh, that I put together uh, testing the X2 DevGrew barrel. And all this is is a bucket of parts, right? It's a stuff and things grip. Uh, it's got Victor Industries stuff in it, the, the uh, uh, mag catch and the buffer retainer, and of course the bolt carrier group. Uh, I think it's an Anderson upper SBA3, uh, Rave 140 trigger, armor spec 9045 uh, safety, uh, things like that. So this has spent its bulk of its life in this for the last 700, 800 rounds. So we're gonna put 20 through it real quick just to ensure function and then run it in the other rifles for comparison, right? So let's do this. Functions flawlessly and locks back. So. I now have the Anderson 11.5 and uh, the Anderson Manufacturing Frontline 11.5. Now, all the guns that I have out here today uh, are very reliable. They work very well in their own right, especially in 
in their uh, price points. So I'm going to do 10 rounds with the Anderson bolt carrier group and then do 10 rounds with the Victor bolt, bolt carrier group uh, just to kind of give my opinion on cycling and things like that, uh, the difference between the two. So this is 10 rounds. I'm using Frontier 223 with the Hornady ammo, with the Hornady uh, uh, bullets. So, again, I've reviewed this gun. Uh, you can see that review down below. It's, been, it's a good gun. It has all mil spec stuff in the upper, uh, upper and lower. So let's change that out for the Victor. So this thing's probably loving me at this point because I've shot it suppressed for like the last, I don't know, five or 600 rounds hasn't been cleaned. Um, so it's probably loving like a brand new, uh, clean bolt carrier group in it. All right, so let's do this. So one of the things right off the bat is that is smoother. That's that chrome plating uh, being very smooth and almost a self-lubricating properties. Um, as far as shooting 10 rounds to 10 rounds, uh, it definitely wasn't worse. I don't know if I noticed a massive improvement, but they also don't claim like this radically crazy improvement. There probably was some muzzle rise difference in my opinion. All right, so this is the Radical Defense 14.5, their uh, Mark I Mod I patrol rifle. I uh, just did a review on this. Again, you can find that link down below. So this is with their Radical Defense Bolt Carrier Group in it. Good shooting gun. Good shooting gun. Um, I said in my review of this that, you know, it, this has considerably less recoil impulse and muzzle rise uh, than a lot of your mil spec stuff out there. And... Uh, Good shooting gun so this will be this will help be a testament to victor if it's better worse any notice anything noticeable or not all right so now we have the victor industries complete di bolt carrier group in there uh right off the bat and this is a coating thing it's it, it'll likely be like this for everything um i do notice a more smoothness in manually cycling the gun That was noticeable. I wasn't sure about the Anderson. I really wasn't sure about the Anderson. I maybe was playing tricks on myself when I said, you know, I, I felt a recoil difference and muzzle rise difference. I did notice a difference in this. That was noticeable. So this is the Cox Arms Guardian 16 inch rifle. Uh, I have two reviews on this that has eight or 9,000 rounds on it at this point, uh, getting ready to do 10 and this is going to be the biggest test for that Victor uh, bolt carrier group because this is a enhanced DLC coated bolt carrier group. This is uh, uh, Cox Arms USA uh, Combat BCG. And this is the smoothest and nicest shooting rifle I've ever used. So if it can at least keep up with this or improve it even in the smallest amount, uh, Victor definitely has a winner on their hands. So this is the Combat BCG um, from Cox Arms. Okay, I forgot to extend the stock on that last one. So uh, this, may, this may actually go a little bit better. Uh, but now to the Victor. So as far as smoothness of action, I don't notice anything. Uh, again, that, that enhanced combat BCG from Cox Arms is DLC coated. Um, that is uh, a super smooth coating. So it's gonna be really hard to compete with that. If there is any difference, it's small enough that I can't feel it in my hand. Uh, as far as muzzle rise, recoil mitigation, 
uh, the action shooting. I do think it at least kept up. Possibly, again, this could be my brain playing tricks on me. I'm perfectly willing to you know, explore that possibility. But it did feel, it did feel a bit different. It felt different. That's what I should say. I'm not going to say better, definitely not worse, but it felt different. And um, I want to do that again. So I have put 20 rounds of X-Tac uh, M855 in here. I have shot, those other guns have less than 3,000 rounds. I think the Anderson has the most of all of them, uh, but that 2,500, 3,000 or less rounds on it, so not much on those guns. I've shot the hell out of this, so I'm very tuned to how this gun normally runs. So that first 10 rounds was actually for you, not for me. Um, let's, let's do 20, see what happens here. I actually do think that there is an increase in my follow-up shot as far as speed goes. Um, I do. I actually do think so. So how has the Victor Industries DI Bolt Carrier Group held up over what is close to a thousand rounds at this point um, with that nice chrome uh, coating on it. Well, I hadn't mentioned it earlier because, well, there's just none. There is, just, there just isn't. There's a little bit of extra shininess on this ramp here. Maybe a little bit in some of these, you know, these these areas that are known for contact. But um, the thing I haven't used a chemical on it. All I did was take a shop rag and just wipe it off. Right now, I haven't used a single chemical on it to clean it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's. There's just no sign. It looks almost, with, with the exception of some of the crud on it, it looks almost like the day that I got it. So before I get into price, again, um, this is subjective testing. I have no way to test what Victor has actually said on their website as far as does it actually change uh, you know, all this stuff that they were talking about. I have no way of actually testing that. I only have sub subjective uh, 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 feelings for each firearm, um, and I've tried. I'm, I'm really trying to not uh, fool myself. Like, oh, this is new, so it's better, or it's new. This is what they say it does, and my brain saying, oh yeah, it does that, right? I'm trying not to do that. Um, so, but I do believe, I do think that uh, I, that I noticed faster follow-up shots, the ability to pull the trigger faster in the Cox Arms USA, which is saying something. Again, that is a phenomenal shooting rifle. Um, I didn't, so, for some odd reason or another, with the Anderson Manufacturing 11.5, which is all mil spec on the, on the uh, main body of the internals, I didn't notice a massive difference. And I don't know if that's because nothing else in the gun is upgraded. I just... Maybe it's because it's an 11.5, it's the shortest one of them. I don't know, uh, but I didn't notice as much difference with that. And then the 14.5, uh, Radical Defense, I did notice what I thought was a little bit better muzzle control recoil mitigation with it as well. Um, and that's, again, subjective, just how I think it ran. Although it did seem like, it did seem like the longer the barrel got, uh, the more I notice the performance of the bolt carrier group, if that makes any sense at all. So, to the YouTube sensors, I'm about to talk about prices of all these pieces. None of them are regulated goods, number one. Uh, and number two, I don't sell regulated goods, I don't sell firearms, and I'm not selling anything you've seen here today, although everything I've used here today, you can find ways to check all that stuff out from the magazines, optics, and everything else in the you know where. But I am not doing anything against YouTube policies at all, so leave me the hell alone. The uh, detent or the H2 buffer retainer, 15 bucks. Great, very inexpensive, and I think, uh, especially if you're a high volume shooter, um, I think it's absolutely worth every penny of that $15, 100%. Uh, I, I think they did a lot of things that 
I don't know why the industry hadn't done before, um, but yeah, definitely recommendation. The Ambi Mag Release and Mag Catch. Nice product, very smooth, nice machining. I'm not a, I'm not a lefty, although it does work fine in both uh, left and wrong-handed or right and wrong-handed shooting. Um, it's 85 bucks. And uh, again, if you are a lefty, uh, you're probably in the market for some sort of an Ambi mag release. Eh, check it out. Bolt Carry Group. Bolt Carry Group is getting a little bit high on the higher end of prices of Bolt Carry Groups out there, uh, but I think there's a lot going on with it that may make it worth it. Um, and it is $275 as a complete bolt carry group. You're getting the grade eight fasteners, good staking, the chrome the, the, the uh, chrome coating, the advanced cam path, uh, all that stuff that I think, I believe, has made a difference in various firearms that I've shot it in. Now, is that difference enough for you to spend the money? You have to make that decision. Uh, but I have no issues with this bolt carry group all right i appreciate everybody out there watching and i appreciate victor industries for sending this stuff out to me and being such freaking cool guys at GunCon, like they were they were uh, great to talk to um so if if their representation at GunCon is anything like the company it's a freaking great company too um but thank you to Victor for sending these out. Thank you guys out there for watching. Don't forget to hit like, like share, subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Um, if you think I missed something, if there's a, 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 a specification, I'll try to answer it for you. I try to answer all comments um, that come through any video, especially in the first week or two. So uh, leave that comment if you have any questions or, you know, something to say about it. You can say anything. It helps the channel. Again, I'm going to leave links to the Cox Arms reviews. I'm going to leave links to the Anderson reviews. I'm going to leave links to the Radical Defense reviews. I'm going to leave links to the optics that, I, that are on there that I've reviewed, things like that. So you can see all the products um, on their own merit uh, in each video. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you later.